It's arancini time or arancine in Palermo. This is a classic arancino from Sicily made with love just for you. Let's make it together. And you want the melting cheese everywhere. Yes, baby. Mm. 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 To make the Sicilian arancini like Vincenzo's plate, we need, starting from the rice, 500 grams of arborio rice one quarter of chopped onion, a nice amount of pecorino or parmigiano reggiano, 120 grams of nice butter, and one liter of vegetable stock. For the filling, we are using 500 grams of a top quality beef mince, like ground beef, 100 grams of peas, and that's not because of Gordon Ramsay. It's actually nice to use peas. One tube or can of tomato paste, okay? It's about 120, 130 grams. One chopped carrot, one chopped celery stick, half onion chopped into pieces, fresh basil. Then we're gonna use a beautiful fresh mozzarella. You can use buffalo or you can use fior di latte. And we're also gonna use some dry mozzarella, which we are going to shred. Then we need some extra virgin olive oil, salt and pepper. To crumb the arancini, we have two ways, which I'm going to show you. First, we need fresh breadcrumbs. Then, before we fry in some flour oil, we can do the pastella, which is a mix of flour and, and water, or the eggs. A business will never use eggs because it's too expensive. But to be honest, I like the eggs because it's crispier and tastier. Let's go. First thing we want to do is to put about four or five tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil in a stainless steel pot. Let's do the risotto. So what we want to do is we want to put the onion in there. And we want to cook the onion until it becomes golden brown, okay? It could take about seven to ten minutes. It is important you don't confuse this rice with risotto. We're not making a risotto, it's a different technique. We're actually boiling the rice in a different way, okay? We're putting the water first, followed by the rice. Not a risotto, this is not creamy. This needs to be al dente and drier. See, when the onion is golden brown, just like this, what we're going to do is we are going to add one liter of vegetable stock, which is here. There we go. Put 120 grams of butter in the pot and let's wait until it melts. We're gonna add one tablespoon of the tomato paste and wait until the stock starts to boil. So when the stock starts to boil, we are gonna add the rice, the arborio rice. Now quickly stir. Now we put the lid on and we let it cook until the water absorbs. Guys, always make sure you always stir the rice. See, it's almost ready. We want the liquid to go, but we don't want the rice to get stuck at the bottom. Look inside, look how wonderful this rice is, see? It's not creamy, we do not want the rice to be creamy. Just want the rice to be like this, perfect. When the rice is ready, we put a nice amount of butter, we let it melt, and then we mix it with the rice. Stir, 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 until the rice melts. The rice is ready and we need to rest the rice. It needs to get cold. So here I have a tray that I place in the fridge or in the freezer, okay? We want this to be nice and cold, okay? And what we do now is we wanna put the rice here, okay? We're gonna spread the rice on top of this tray, just like that. Now we gently spread it, but don't push too hard. We do not want to break the rice, okay? Do not break the rice. Spread it with love. Now that we spread the rice just like this, we're gonna put the pecorino or parmigiano on top, okay? Put the pecorino and parmigiano on top and we give the extra flavor. By doing this, we're giving extra flavor to the rice. So important that you do this. So, so important.
Now we need to wait for this to cool down, okay? We got the options of putting it in the fridge or you can naturally do it, okay? So if you do it naturally, it's nice and hot, what's gonna happen is the cheese will melt in the rice. So I'm gonna keep this cold naturally until it gets cold, but it will take about one hour or in the fridge for about half an hour, up to you. Now let's cook the filling for our bolognese arancini. Okay, here we go. We have a generous amount of extra virgin olive oil. Now we do the soffritto. So we have the celery, carrots, and the onions, which we are gonna cook for about 10 minutes on a medium heat. Soffritto is so important. Now we are not making a bolognese ragu, okay? We're doing a semi-bolognese ragu. It's gonna be done in no time, and it's gonna taste delicious. Okay, the soffritto is ready. It's been 10 minutes. So what we do now is we're gonna put the beautiful ground beef, the minced beef. And what we're gonna do now, we're gonna brown the meat. We wanna cook both sides and we want the meat to make love with the sofrito, okay? They need to make love, so we are gonna get a beautiful flavor into the arancini. I'm doing this on a medium high heat now, okay? I wanna brown the meat fast. I want to stir because at the same time, I am breaking the meat here, okay? Trying to break it so we don't have chunks. I want to have small pieces of meat in my filling for the arancini. The beautiful smell. Oh, I can't wait to have the arancini. I know it takes time, I know it takes time, but it's worth it, okay? So any special occasions, you make arancini and every single guest will love you more. See the meat is nice and brown. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna put the peas. We're going to put a tomato paste. Put a tomato paste everywhere. Just break some basil leaves in there and break it with your hands, please. Do not chop the basil on the chopping board because the chopping boards will take the flavors from the basil. You want the basil flavors to go in your food. A little splash of water. And now we stir. Stir, stir, stir. Keep stirring until the red, the beautiful tomatoes come back to life. I think I watched too many Gordon Ramsay video. I use peas all the time. What we wanna do now, we wanna gently cook it on a medium low heat for about 20 minutes, okay? To a maximum of 30 minutes. Make sure you stir during the next 20 minutes, okay? Now, see, you, you don't want this to dry up, okay? So always have a little bit of water on the side and let's make sure this is nice and moist, okay? We want the meat to be nice and moist. And the water also helps to get more tomato sauce out from the tomato paste. One thing we wanna do now is we wanna be generous with the salt and pepper. So we have sea salt over here, some nice pepper, black pepper, and keep stirring. We got 15 more minutes. And if you need to add more water, you add more water. This is something I've been doing lately. I put just a little bit of butter, just not much, just a little bit of butter in there just to make it a touch creamier, okay, at the end, okay? Go five more minutes, and the butter, I think, it's gonna take it to the, to the next level. You don't have to, but it's nice. Hey, does it look like it's ready to you? Hmm? To me, it looks like this filling wants to go inside the arancini. So, come on, cool down and make love with the arancini. Now let's cool down this beautiful meat filling for our arancini. Now we want this to cool down, okay? We don't want this to be too hot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna place it in the fridge until the rice is ready. I would say at least one hour in the fridge. Guys, it's time to assemble the arancini. So first thing to do, we wanna cut the fior di latte in a way so we can have small, small cubes, you know, like very, very small cubes. Just go like this, 
we make them small. See, we want to make them very small, very tiny. So it's so much easier to melt when we fry them. Look at that. Fresh mozzarella at its best. We want to have a bowl with water because our hands need to be wet all the time, okay? Like when you make meatballs, you want wet hands. Here we got the cheese, here we have the meat filling. So what we do now, we get the cold rice and the rice needs to be cold, guys. When I say cold, it needs to be cold. We do this on the palm of your hand. Now we get the meat. Put the meat in there. Oh yeah, just be generous, please. Put the meat in there. Be generous with the cheese. The cheese needs to go everywhere, okay? You want the cheese to be everywhere. And now that we have the filling here, let's put a little bit more. Be generous, please. Let's put more cheese on top. Now that we have this full of cheese, let's get the rest of the rice and we put it on top, okay? Put it on top, close this side, and now we make the ball. And when you make the ball, you want to press. You want to press because you get all the moisture out and you make it tight, as tight as possible. But what I can say to you is that you get lots of moisture coming on your hands right now, okay? So what we need to do now is we need to make the arancini into balls. We're gonna place it in here. We're gonna place it in this, okay? We're not gonna fry them straight away. It is important for the arancini to rest. That's how you make the arancini. Simple and easy. So guys, what we do now is we need to put them in the fridge. I would say overnight or at least one to two hours, but try to do it overnight. What we want to do is we want the starch to basically set, set the arancini. So when we fry them tomorrow, they will be easy to fry, they won't fall apart, and they will be nice and firm. If we don't do that, there is a risk that it will break. So put them in the fridge, and get all the moisture out. This is the day after, and the arancini are nice and they dried up, you know? The moisture is out, see? There's no moisture. They are perfect. They're firm and they're not gonna break. And this is what we want. I'm gonna show you how to crumb the arancini two different ways, okay? One way is with the flour and water. The other way is just with eggs. I think with the egg it's a bit crispier, okay? But you choose. Now, if you want to do the pastella, which is basically flour and water, the most popular way to do in Sicily, you just add water to flour, and then you mix. You mix until you get a sort of uh, cream, okay? But basically, we don't want this to be too thick. We want this to be nice and runny, so that way we can crumb the arancini. See, this mix here is called pastella, okay? So now what we do is we get an arancino and we put the arancino through this, okay? I'm only using one hand to do this job. Put the arancino through the pastella, just everywhere, just like that. Perfect. And now we put it on the breadcrumb. So this pastella will help to absorb all the breadcrumb, just like that. See? Breadcrumb goes everywhere. And now we put the arancino on a tray with baking paper. And now we use my favorite way, which is the egg, okay? So what we do is we beat two eggs, beat two eggs, and we put the arancino in the egg. This is what I like to do homemade. It's nice with the egg. Get rid of the egg, put in the breadcrumb, and make sure that Arancino makes love with the bread. Perfect. And we're ready to crumb it. Here we go. Now we need to fry the arancini. You can use peanut oil, but you have to be careful if someone is allergic to a peanut, or we're using sunflower oil. We need a temperature of 
180 Celsius. Let's check. Let's see if the oil is ready. That's what I do. I'm not, I don't measure the temperature. It's ready to fry. See, it's frying. So we start by frying the arancini. We've got one. I've got two. To fry the arancini, you're looking at between five to seven minutes. Okay, we want them to uh, become nice and brown on the outside, but we also want them to cook on the inside. What I like to do is I like to move them around, okay? If you use a fryer, it's different, you don't need to do it. But if you're using a pot, just like me, it's good to move them around, okay? Oh, look at that beautiful color. Look at that color. That also helps because of the egg. See, this one is the egg one. See the color that it gets? Beautiful dark color, look at that. Now, if your arancini gets darker before the five minutes, if it gets to this color, well, let me tell you, they are ready, okay? You don't need to wait five minutes. They are ready. We do 10 more seconds, and then we take them out. But right, let's take it out. Look at this beautiful color. Look at this beautiful color of the arancini. This is what we want. This is the one done with the pastella. Look at the difference. Look at the difference of color. Look at that. That's fantastic. This is the crunch. This is the sound that you want. Look how nice these big bowls are, huh? Who doesn't like big bowls like this? And this is how you make the famous Sicilian bowls. Oh yeah, the arancini bowls made with love and crunchy. This is what a restaurant will do. Let's get some nice homemade tomato sauce if you can. Let's put it at the bottom. Beautiful. Then we're gonna place the arancino on top, just like that. A little bit more tomato on top. A sprinkle of pecorino cheese. Oh, we love pecorino cheese. And last but not least, a nice basil leaf. And here we go, the arancino bolognese is ready to be served. Guys, this is what we want on the inside, okay? Let's open the arancino. And you want the melting cheese everywhere. Yes, baby. Yes. And now we're ready to eat it. Mmm. Mmm. How cheesy, mm. yummy. This is definitely worth it. You wanna put spinach or ricotta, do it. You wanna put mushrooms, do it. You wanna put mozzarella and ham, do it. Mm. Mm. This is marvelous. Marvelous, marvelous. Mm -hmm. And the peas, mm. peas are so beautiful in there. Gordon Ramsay will love this one. Mmm. Mmm. I don't know how many I can have. I can eat easily three or four and I will be so happy. Mmm. The rice is perfectly cooked. My hands are beautiful and oily. Oh. Crunchy to perfection. Mmm. 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 We brought Sicily to my kitchen. Guys, I've got three more to eat. I don't know what else to say. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next Vincenzo's Plate video recipe. E ora si mangia. Vincenzo's Plate. Mmm, I'm going to have fun. Thank you guys. Write a comment below, please.